Welcome to the IVM Podcast Network. The Oncos Podcast is an IVM production. And if you like this show, check out Geek Fruit for in-depth conversations about pop culture, science fiction and overall nerd culture. You don't want to miss this. You're listening to the On Course Podcast. Hi everyone, welcome to the On Course Podcast. On Course is a creative and alternate education company that aims to bridge the gap between formal classroom education and real world skills. We offer a range of programs from short skill based courses to test prep to application assistance for those who are looking to study abroad. My name is Alisha Mashrawala and I'm the CEO and co-founder at On Course. And today we have uh, another part of our alumni series. We have Amira Kharakiwala from Mount Holyoke College. Hi, Amira. Hi, Alicia. Uh, so Amira is also one of the associates at On Course, and I think today she's going to give us a good idea of sort of what it's like to study at a college like Mount Holyoke, uh, and a little bit about her experience there as well. So Amira, just to start, tell us a little bit about Mount Holyoke. You know, sort of where it's located, um, how large or small is the college. So Mount Holyoke is in Western Massachusetts. So it's about two hours out of Boston. Um, it's actually the first women's college of its kind in America. So for a long time in the U.S., you know, schools like the Ivy Leagues and bigger universities, they weren't co-ed. And, you know, if a really smart woman wanted to go to college, she had to go to the Seven Sisters. So they were often considered the equivalent kind of education that a woman could receive. So Mount Holyoke was the first one. Um, it's a pretty small school. It's just about 2,000 uh, students. Um, it's a small liberal arts college in a pretty rural kind of area. It has a really strong kind of community atmosphere, which is why I think a lot of people choose to go there. So as a rural environment, how far is it from a city and what's the closest city nearby? So Boston is probably the closest city, but there are a lot of towns that are really close by. What's great about you know, the areas that there are a lot of free buses and things are very accessible. So there are a lot of towns that are close by that have, you know, any amenities that you'd need or, you know, ever need to go to. So why did you choose Mount Holyoke when you applied to college? So I really wanted to go to like a small liberal arts college. For me, the kind of school I went to in Bombay, it was really important for me to be in a place where I wasn't kind of, you know, one like needle in a haystack, basically. I wanted to be somewhere where community was important, where traditions were important and kind of have that very personal connection with my college, with my professors, with my, you know, classmates. Um... I chose to go to women's college. That wasn't a very big decisive factor for me. I think it just loved the college so much that the fact that it was all girls wasn't what kind of made the decision. And what did you study at Mount Holyoke? So I went into Mount Holyoke very undecided. I was pretty confused about what I wanted to study. I tried out a lot of classes. I took politics and economics and I ended up having a double major. So I studied art history. And I chose South Asian studies. And so what was great about that was I got to study politics, anthropology, film, architecture, you know, history. As long as they kind of fell under the heading of South Asia, I could take those classes. And I guess being in a small liberal arts college, sort of having that atmosphere around you where everyone is kind of exploring and experimenting uh, is definitely an advantage as well. Yeah, I think like people would assume automatically that because you're at a small school, the number of the diversity of classes you take is smaller. But that just wasn't true. I felt like my professor was so kind of intelligent and, you know, the things that they were knowledgeable about, they had such diverse interests and, you know, their independent projects or research papers and you just learn so much being there. And I guess speaking of diversity, um, a lot of people are under the impression that being at a small college, usually away from a city, there aren't too many international students or not a very diverse student body. What were your thoughts on that? Did you feel like Mount Holyoke was a very international school? So Mount Holyoke is actually, I think, maybe a rarity in America, especially with liberal arts colleges, because it's one of the few colleges that's really, really stress on having an international student body. So they have close to, I think, 30% of students who come from, you know, other countries. They have people from, like, you know, countries in Africa to, you know, India, Nepal, Tibet. Um, It's really diverse in terms of that. And even your student body itself, the American student population, is diverse just in its own way. That's that's actually interesting because I feel like a lot of the other liberal arts colleges uh, don't have as diverse a student body or student population as well. Yeah. So I guess Mount Holyoke does stand out in that sense. Um, and you mentioned earlier the Seven Sisters. Mm-hmm. So can you tell us a little bit about sort of, you know, the advantage or disadvantage of being at an all-women's college 
and sort of what your experience was was it difficult for you to transition into something like that um so the transition probably wasn't that hard for me you know um i went in and i made friends and i think that for me it didn't matter whether my friends were boys or girls you know they were just my friends so that was kind of great what was really cool about the seven sister was kind of um consortium is that they're very committed to each other historically and even today i think that you know even when it comes to alumni connections and job opportunities no one from like wellesley is going to be like oh you're not from wellesley so i'm not going to help you their commitment is not just to their own school it's like a commitment to women in general and they're always looking to kind of give you that helping hand and get you to where you want to go so i guess that helps especially in the job mm-hmm. environment and the job atmosphere did you feel like uh, being at mount holio gave you any sort of advantages when you were looking at job opportunities or i guess another way to put it is how does mount holio help in terms of getting a job after you graduate so um mount holio does have a lot of kind of you know i think what they've been doing really well is is maintaining these connections with their alums right if you are working and it could be across a field of streams you know whether you're working at a sadbees in new york or you're working at merrillinch in you know manhattan they maintain those connections because they know that their students are going to need them and what's amazing is that these alums are very happy to do it when it comes to jobs in townships they put in that extra word for you they'll give you that edge you know just marking you out as like hey she went to mount holyoke i can vouch for her you know and that's what i think really helps a lot of students again you know their kids competing from wharton and you know stone for business jobs and it's that doesn't mean that going from mount holyoke doesn't like puts you at a disadvantage there's still enough students going in there and making their mark that's great and i think that's the advantage like you were mentioning earlier of having like a uh, wellesley brinmore barnard you know that entire connection as well where i guess you can search for job opportunities through different alumni groups as Definitely, well definitely yeah So you mentioned that you studied art history and South Asian studies. Uh any particular classes that you took at Mount Holyoke that you loved or you know uh, you you never thought you'd ever end up doing? Yeah, so I think you know my favorite class would be it's really hard to choose but one of my favorites was I took a class on Bollywood which you know sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun but once you sit in an in like an academic environment the entire way i watched those movies was so different because not only did i you know analyze them in kind of the political contents or the historical contents but you you don't realize how much kind of cinematography goes into kind of bollywood movies that were so easy to trash on our own or be like you know this was so filmy and this was so silly but it was just amazing to kind of learn about the history of our own cinema and i'm not even talking about art house cinema like we all know that you know india has great art house movies and this was just a whole other experience like watching things like you know mother india and goody and things that i'd never seen and i really loved that class yeah that's interesting actually very <laughs> unique as well yeah and in terms of classes how like what's different about the structure how are they taught how large are the classes um what is the format so most man holy classes are not very big there are a few kind of lecture classes that are you know you're going to have that everyone has to take which are about 50 60 people most classes for me were anywhere from you know 10 to 20 kids that was great for me my classes were very little lecture very heavy on conversation your homework was the basis of what you were going to do in class next time you know you are reading a book you're reading articles you're watching documentaries and you have to come in and talk about talk about that it's not enough to read out from the book right you have to talk about why what stands out to you what are the reasons behind that so it was a lot of analysis and learning from your class as much as you're learning from your professor and do you find a big kind of transition from the indian system moving to mount holyoke cuz you did study the hsc here as well so moving from that to an american system how difficult was that for you it was you? a it was a big jump i think um in terms of what was expected you know it's not like you're sitting in class and your professor's calling on you but you also quickly realize that it's expected for you to join in you know and it's not a, and i think that was the big jump was okay i'm not supposed to just say what's written in my book i have to kind of give an example give an opinion you know try to talk about it in a different way so it was a bit hard i think but you know i think i thrived in it it was something i enjoyed i that's why i went there right so it was it was somewhere i fit in and i was really happy to go 
And I'm sure you had a lot of friends go to different colleges in the U.S. as well. Uh, how do you feel like their experience was different from your experience at Mount Holyoke? I think the very big difference is that a lot of, you know, maybe students in India choose to go to city schools. And their relationship to their campus is very different, maybe. Their relationship to, like, community. You know, I think you have a tendency to kind of go off and do your own things. Whereas at Mount Holyoke, like, you're living with your friends, you're eating with your friends. It's a, it's a very deep kind of connection that you end up building. You, you know, it's not isolated, but you're mostly functioning within the parameters of your campus and you form a very kind of deep love. Like, you know, you ha you'll have your favorite hill or your favorite bench, your favorite view, you know, there are things like that that I don't think maybe they can say that they had. And given that Mount Holyoke has so much tradition, one of the oldest women's colleges, uh, what are some of the cool traditions that they had? So there were quite a few. So one of the first traditions that kicks off the year is called Mountain Day. And um, the entire idea is that it's one of the last sunny days of fall, you know, so it's usually towards maybe the beginning of October. And at 6 a.m., the bells start ringing in the clock tower and they just ring continuously for a minute. And that's kind of what signals that it's mountain day. And so all classes are canceled and everybody just goes to the mountain, um, to the range, Mount Holyoke range. And you climb up the mountain and then you eat ice cream and you hang out with your school college president, you hang out with your professors. And it's just a day to kind of appreciate nature and just be happy yeah not actually not actually interesting, <laughs> interesting. what's cool. really nice about it is that they try to continue that tradition on and of course once you're working you can't exactly take a day off to go eat ice cream but you know all around the world we have mountain day reunion gatherings and so the moment you get that email from the alum association you go you know to a pre-decided spot and get ice cream with your alum friends and you know what are some of the clubs and organizations that you were a part of when you were on campus as well um, so i was part of a few different camp uh, organizations so i was definitely part of my uh, south asian students association i was um a little bit also involved in the outdoor club because i wanted to go camping with them so the south asian student association was probably the club I was most involved in. Um, what I realized when I went there was that I had so many kind of American friends that I did miss some parts of being home, and which is kind of why I got involved in it. You know, we hosted, of course, the regular Diwali parties, but we had a lot of interesting guest speakers, you know, whether they are writers in India or politicians coming in and, you know, getting to interact with them. And these are, you know, pretty well-known people in, you know, Pakistan, India, Bangladesh and kind of come in and talk about their work or talk about what their politics means. That was cool. The outdoor club was awesome. They would go camping every year in fall and they'd go to the um, Rocky Mountains. And, um, you know, it's again in nature, so it's beautiful and it's fall colors. Everything's red and orange and lit up. And that was a really nice experience. And so you mentioned uh, meeting or at least having events with uh, very established people from different parts of South Asia. Anything that rings a bell, anything in particular that you remember? There was one politician who came to Mount Holyoke from Pakistan and he was this very young guy, you know, and his entire premise was that, you know, his name is Gibran Nasser and his entire premise is that, you know, that all these really highly educated Pakistanis who are needed back in the country because like the country needs to move forward, you know, they want to be secular as much as possible. And they're not coming back because, of course, there are many reasons it's dangerous or there's you know, lack of job opportunities. But he's like, you know, come back. Your country needs you. And that was probably the coolest person to meet. Yeah. And what about sort of your student body around you? Do you have a lot of friends or roommates that kind of study different things from you? Or do you feel like you kind of stuck more within a peer group that were taking similar classes? My friend group was not even close to my academic interests, to be honest. Um, they were, some of them were pre-med, they were studying biology, they were studying politics, economics, um, Spanish. It was very, very diverse, which was kind of nice because we weren't always together and we kind of, you know, enjoyed our time together. The rest of the student body, what was really nice about Mount Holyoke is that it's connected to the five colleges as well. So the five colleges are Amherst, Smith, Mount Holyoke, Hampshire, and UMass. And that really increases your student kind of experiences because you get to interact with people all over, right? So it's not like you're in a boarding school where you're like, oh, okay, you have to go home now. It's 6 p.m. You can go explore different campuses, different professors, different friend groups. And so, of course, my friend group included people from other schools as well. Interestingly, you spoke about the five colleges that you were part of the network or consortium. Did you, like, how, how does it work? Like, how are they actually interconnected? What are some of the benefits of having that um, sort of interconnectivity between the five? So the five colleges operate almost... Um, 
you know, perfectly in sync. Uh, what's great is that you can take as many classes as you like off campus. So just, you know, as an example, maybe Hampshire College had a great French department, just as an example, you know, I could go take classes with them. Or maybe there was a professor at Amos who I really wanted to study with. I think the one that, you know, just as an example, was that there was this amazing Amos professor who specialized in um, miniature Mug Mughal paintings. And that was, you know, he was probably the only one over there and the only one and he was really famous and prolific and for me to get a chance to even talk to him about my work was amazing so there was a lot of fluidity they allow you to study there you know you of course you're gonna have friends there it's very easily accessible they provide free buses so you can move from campus to campus um it, it operates pretty seamlessly is it hard to kind of take a class at one of these colleges or like what is the process of actually doing it so say if a student is currently studying or is planning to kind of go to one of these colleges um is there anything they should know about trying to take these classes between colleges so i think the only kind of restrictions are is that they don't really encourage first year students to take classes off campus. They want you to get a little bit settled down at Mount Holyoke itself or you know whichever one you're at. They won't stop you. You can always get that extra permission to do it, so that's fine. Usually you just kind of look it up, you see the class over there, you're gonna request for registration. I think you know they will still give if the class is filling up really full, you won't be given preference over a student from that own own college. But if there's space in the class, there's nothing stopping you from taking it. Uh, so we're in conversation with Amira, and we're just going to take a short break before we get back to talking about Montolio College. That was Tantrik Steve from Hansraj College, Delhi, performing at IIT Bombay's Mood Indigo. Just like them, there's a lot of new talent and art coming out of colleges all across India. But unfortunately, most of this goes completely unnoticed or ignored. To fix this, we started ATKT.in. Hi, I'm Ankur. I'm a musician and a rapper. And I found that one of the best things about being an artist myself is finding new talent. Through ATKT.in, Tanya, my colleague who's a dancer, and our whole team really is putting all of our efforts into discovering and promoting all the coolest talent that's coming out of colleges all across India. And this goes up on our website, our social media, TV, radio, and now of course, this podcast with IVM. Make sure you go to our website, support the talent with your likes, your shares, your comments, all of that really matters. Go ahead, check it out, ATKT.in. We're back uh, from our break and we're back to conversation about Mount Holyoke. Um, Amira, again, thanks for ha coming to the studio. Uh, yeah. So we were talking earlier about sort of taking classes in some of the other campuses around you. Uh, did you end up doing any of those or were you more restricted to Mount Holyoke and the classes that they offered? So I did actually take quite a few classes off campus um, because of my major, South Asian Studies. Of course, there was a limit on just the number of classes I could take at Mount Holyoke, I eventually ran out. So I took classes at Hampshire College and Amherst College. And at Hampshire, I took a class on Gandhi. So it was completely, you know, four months of only studying him, his writing, his politics, which was really cool. You know, I kind of went in not really knowing how to feel. I think that we have such strong opinions about him already, but it really opened my eyes to other things about him. I took a, quite a few classes at Amherst as well. One that probably jumps out is this class on public culture in South Asia. And there was a professor from Bangladesh there who taught me about India. And, you know, you talk about McDonald's launching in India. That's kind of what the class was about. But it, it was all about that. And it was amazing. Yeah. And how and now we've talked a lot about the academic side of it. Yeah. So let's move on to a little bit of the student life. Mm -hmm. So. What was the student life like? Did you go out of um, Mount Holyoke a lot? Did you go into Boston a lot? What Did you find the need to do any of that? Mm. I wouldn't say I went to Boston very often. Maybe it was once or twice a semester at the most. I think that we got so kind of busy on our own campus life and there was just so much to do anyways that you didn't really feel the need to go anywhere. Uh, what was great was there were a lot of events, you know, where, okay, there's a new exhibit in the Boston Museum, you know, the college can arrange a bus for you, a group of kids can go. But campus itself had so much to do, whether it was, you know, talks with politicians or seminars or conferences, you know, there's Model United Nations happening, there's just so much, the debate team, and even socially, there's so many great restaurants, 
And I think, you know, if you have to travel like 10 minutes away, it wasn't a very big deal for us to go, you know, go to our favorite Indian restaurant or go walk around Northampton, which is the town close by. And they're almost like mini cities in their own way. They're just a lot smaller. But they have kind of everything that you'd need, whether it's going to a concert or going out to a, you know, jazz performance or a club or whatever you're into. And do you feel in terms of sort of, uh, from the job perspective side of things, uh, did a lot of companies come to campus to recruit or did you feel like you had to reach out more than, say, someone who is already based in a larger mm-hmm. city? So what was great was, again, about the five colleges was that they hosted a lot of these events together. There were a lot of career fairs, whether it was Mount Holyoke or Smith or Amherst. You know, I think they took turns basically in hosting campus events, career fairs. And if someone was coming down, of course, we were always encouraged to apply. It was as much our event as it was theirs. So the opportunities were endless. You know, if someone is coming down to Amos to recruit, Mount Holyoke and Smith students are obviously going to be there. And it worked that way for all three. So we had a lot of uh, career fairs. There were a lot of work in our senior year, of course, where we went to visit certain organizations in Boston or New York, which had, you know, again, our alum connections who hosted events for us where we could learn more about the company and kind of be encouraged to apply and, um, you know, at least understand what they're looking for. So that, that's actually really interesting mm-hmm. because it gives you sort of that entire platform to kind of search for any kind of job opportunities that may be right. even available. Mm-hmm. Um, and more from, I guess, advice to mm-hmm. those sort of listening and those around us. Yeah. Is there a particular type of student that fits into Mount Holyoke? You know, for a long time, I thought that was true, that there was a certain type of maybe girl or you know, boy who just wouldn't fit in. But it, it's just not true. I realize that there's somebody for everybody there. There's so much diversity, even in terms of personality, that no matter what kind of person you are, you're going to fit in. You know, whether you want friends who have the same interests as you or you just want friends who like to do the same things that you do, you're always going to find that group. And I think that was amazing was everybody I knew at Mount Holyoke had their friend circle and they had these very close bonds with them. You know, even today, I'm happy to fly somewhere and meet up with my, you know, college friends and do a little mini trip together. And for students who are looking at applying to Mm -hmm. some of these colleges, what sort of piece of advice would you give them Mm -hmm. in terms of what they should be focusing on currently in grade 11, grade 12, if they do want to get into some of the most competitive women's colleges? I think just be yourself in some ways but be committed to some cause you know these colleges are not only looking for the next CEO right they're looking for leaders who are going to change the world that's what they want they want to see that in your application they want to see like a commitment to whether it's climate change whether it's to politics whether it's to human rights they want to see these things in their applicants that's what they're looking for they're looking for leaders at the end of the day and you have to figure out a way to kind of combine your own interests and your own passions to that. And do you feel like because Mount Holyoke is sort of a slightly more rural location and coming from a big city, whether it's Bombay or Delhi or Bangalore, do you feel like it's useful for someone to go visit the college before they apply or before they Mm -hmm. consider taking up an offer if they've got one? I think if you're able to visit, it's always a great idea. I don't think anyone has ever visited Mount Holyoke and not fallen in love with it, or whether it's Wellesley or Smith. Just the campus atmosphere is so positive and amazing that I think the visit itself just sells itself. Okay. And is there anything you wish you knew before you went to Mount Holyoke? Any sort of surprises or, you know, just things that you kind of wish you were prepared for, I guess? The cold probably uh, wasn't expecting it to be as bad as it was. We had a very early winter my first year and that was pretty much a disaster in terms of me being ready for it. But, um, you know, other than that, just dive in and enjoy it. Like, even change is good. Thanks, everyone, for listening to our On Course podcast. Uh, For more information, if you want to learn more, if you have any questions, you can contact us on info at oncourseglobal.com. Or you can visit our website, www.oncourseglobal.com. Or you could write to us on Facebook or Twitter as well. Thanks, Amira, for joining us in the studio today. Thank you. Excuse me, Bayak. 
एक्सक्यूज मी बोले मैडम मेन्यू में क्या है मेन्यू में सीन अन सीन है पॉडकास्ट है ऑन कॉस है साइरस है मेर इन इंडिया रीडिस्कवरी प्रोजेक्ट एम्पावरिंग सीरीज सेक्स वेक्स है आई एम लाइक है सिम्प्लीफाइड है कीपिंग इट क्वेयर है टिंग्स एंड डेस्टिनेशन है माई नेबर सकर बर्ग है और द फैन कर राजे आपको क्या चाहिए एक बार रिपीट कर देंगे क्या रिपीट रिपीट नहीं करता हम आप जाओ आई वी एम पॉडकास्ट डॉट कॉम पे और सुनो ये सब या फिर डाउनलोड करो उनका ऐप सब आपकी उंगलियों पे